welcome to the Naughty Child podcast with me, Richard. And me, Polly. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. I do everything before I leave. I need to find that bag. <laughs> Alex Hartley took us off air in Brighton earlier this year. I'm a huge fan of Pepper. We thought we were really funny, so why doesn't everyone else think we're really funny? <laughs> it's been the longest year ever, hasn't it? She's the most relaxed captain you've ever known. You got me through my flight from Mackay to Adelaide, so thank you very much. Well, my dog is now called Judy Anderson. Oh, well, Manchester Originals aren't through to the Eliminators, so I've got Jane Custine. Yeah. Sophie Eccleston's the worst, like having a child with you when she's on tour. I don't know whether it shows something about me or whether it just shows I'm a little bit stupid. So, Polly, what a week it's been. Yeah, it's been a bit of a crazy week. Shall we address the elephant in the room? Yes. Um, so we're on Zoom today um, because I'm in Birmingham. And, and I'm in Paris. You're in Paris. Um, yeah, do you want to expand a bit? <laughs> well, yes. It, it, one of the things with being a French teacher is you get to do a trip to France. And so we managed to successfully just about get 37 children out of Britain and into France. <laughs> Uh, despite the protestations of uh, the French police at the border. And um, yeah, so we had a lovely day uh, in France today, looking at some First World War sites, and then one of our favourite places in the world, Park Asterix tomorrow, and then a day in Paris on Saturday. So um, yeah, really, really good. But missing you, Polly, of course, being having to do the podcast remotely today. Yeah, it's a bit strange, but I suppose this will be what it's like when I leave home. So I guess we'll have to get used to it. <laughs> Yeah, looking forward to that, Paul. Cheers. <laughs> um, so shall we go through a bit of women's cricket news this week? Um, kind of the big thing that happened, I think it was announced uh, just after we put the podcast out last week, was that Catherine Brunt um, has retired from Test cricket. Yeah, a bit of a strange announcement, mm-hmm. taking that we only play one game a year. Um, <laughs> so, um, so she's not playing that game. Mm. And as she'd only bowled four overs all season, that was hardly a surprise either. Um, I guess the question is clearly therefore she's not retired from other forms of the game yeah. and whether she's going to get picked for those um, or not. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess we'll, we'll see. I mean, in a sense, she hasn't really done anything this season. So um, we'll see how things are mm-hmm. for her. But, you know, form is temporary, class is permanent. Mm. Um, it would be nice for her to choose the manner and timing of her going. Yeah. But I guess that's a two-way process, isn't mm. it? Yeah. And I think, yeah, so from her statement, she was saying how she wants to focus on white ball cricket. But I mean, my view was like, well, you're always focusing on white ball cricket. It's only like, you know, two weeks of the year that you focus on red ball. Um, So that didn't quite make sense. But um, I think you speculated that it might be a thing of, you know, she she goes at the end of the Commonwealth Games. um, Mm -hmm. And that's her kind of final thing. And so she's saving herself for the T20s. And so she's in full fitness for that which could be possible but that also means that there's big big opportunities for young seamers coming through um so the test was announced now we speculated last week about potential um people who could be coming in and um i suppose not necessarily taking up the roles of Anya and Catherine because that'll be the more senior player you know people like Kate Cross in the side but um we did expect there to be announcements of people like Lauren Bell, who has been included. So um, I'll go through the list of uh, people in the test squad. So you've got Heather Knight, obviously. Um, Then potential debut for Emily Arlott. She was in the test squad last summer as well. Um, Tammy Beaumont to open. Lauren Bell, um, young Seema, who offers something different in terms of height. Um, Kate Cross. Alice Davidson Richards, ADR. We didn't really speak about her last week at all as an option because she's more of an all-rounder, um, but she does bossy. Uh, Freya Davis, who's obviously made her debuts um, in other forms of cricket, but not in test cricket. Uh, Charlie Dean, Sphere Dunkley, Sophie Eccleston, Emma Lamb, um, potentially to open, presumably taking the on Winfield Hill spot. Um, Nat Silver, and then Izzy Wong as a travelling reserve. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what the side is picked um, when the test match starts on Monday. Uh, I would play two spinners, mm-hmm. definitely. Uh, it's just a case of, therefore, how many batters, how many bowlers do you play? Therefore, how many seamers do you play? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? If you count, mm-hmm. uh, Nat Siver, um, and who those people are. Um, I, 
yeah, I, I think uh, Lauren Bell, I think it's almost certain yeah. to play. Uh, I'd love to see Emily Arlott play, having missed out on every opportunity last year. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I think it's a, it's an interesting time, isn't it? And I think England will have a strong side, whatever. Mm. Uh, South Africa will give us a good um, challenge, but I expect England to be the more you know the stronger team and, yeah. and to win that game. Yeah, and it was interesting to see. So over the last three days, in fact, there hasn't been a school card for it, which I've been quite annoyed about. But the England A game against South Africa, um, so that was an A squad. So that was Georgia Elwood, Mai Bushir, Danny Gibson, Sarah Glenn, Freya Kemp. Eve Jones, Ellen McCowan, Callie Moore, Tara Norris, Grace Potts, Grace Scrivens, Alexa Stonehouse, Maddie Villiers, Lauren Winfield and Danny Wyatt, um, who played in this A game. And it was really interesting to see because it's the first time we've ever seen that South Africa squad play multi-day cricket. And actually for a lot of the A team as well, um, especially the younger players, it's their first time ever um, playing red ball or multi-day cricket. Um, and Laura Wolfar got a century, then retired um but similarly like England batted on bold well so you know they did challenge South Africa um so I think it'll be really interesting to see um how it goes next week and I mean if Laura if Laura Warbuck can get off the mark then um you know obviously she can't carry the entire team but actually she will challenge England um and and I think that's really important she's such a good player such a good player to watch in fact you can watch you're going on Thursday aren't you yeah, I am. Uh, no, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Yeah. Wednesday, day three. Like day three. Very random day. Um, so I'm really excited for that. Um, the weather is not looking too good, uh, which isn't amazing because there's nothing worse than rain delays. And yeah, could be a, could be a bit of a, a rainy one throughout the week. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. And that, uh, there hasn't been a women's test match for a while without rain, so... Um, it's part of the game, isn't it? It's part of the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about? Uh, well, we could introduce our guest for this week, who is yes. going to be playing in that game. Yeah, so we spoke to Laura Goodall last week, um, ahead of the test match, because um, it's really exciting. Um, potential debut for many, many South African players. Um, and it's great to chat to her because actually she's going to be in England for a while with uh, the Commonwealth Games, obviously coming to Birmingham. And um, yeah, loves Cadbury chocolate. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So I, I think that South African team need to get themselves to Cadbury World, yeah. Cadbury Factory in Birmingham. Um, it would be a great thing for them to visit during the Commonwealth Games. I think we can fix that up for them, can't we? Yeah. I mean, I'm looking for Cadbury partnership. If Cadbury want to sponsor us as a podcast, like how good would it be in shooting, you know, I'm the dad, I'm the daughter. This episode is brought to you by Cadbury's Chocolate. How good would that be? Yeah, and I don't think we would actually require payment in cash, really, would we? Just chocolate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And in dairy milk. Yeah, dairy milk. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so if anyone works at Capri's and can sort that out for us, that'd be perfect. Um, and, you know, next week we might be bringing you the episode in association with Cabri World. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I hope you will enjoy our interview with Lara Goodall. <laughs> So obviously we are big England fans and England are playing South Africa very soon. So it's all very exciting. Um, so let's start at the very beginning. What is your cricket story? Um, I'm literally just a, a young girl that I grew up in the streets of Cape Town. Um, I, I have an older brother um, and in the street that I grew up in, it's like um, I mean, there was only boys that were my age. The girls are much, much older than me. They were teenagers at the time and I was about six, seven. Um, and then I just... Join in with the boys, otherwise I would sit alone and, you know, do nothing, play by myself. And I wasn't about to do that. So I literally just picked up a bat and my brother really put me the ins and outs of it. And um, we're massive football fans as well. So it was football, uh, cricket, whatever we could find, really. Um, if it was a, a tennis ball and a bat or a, a football, we'll, we'll, we'd do both. Um, so... I was just starting in the streets and then eventually when I went to school, um, I started playing for school with the boys and 
I played with the boys until I actually matriculated until I, I graduated from high school. Um, and then I just took off from there. Um, I, I played football at, at quite a decent level as well until I was about 15, 16 years old. And the schedule just got a bit too hectic and I couldn't do both anymore. So eventually I ended up on the cricket path and yeah, I am today. Yeah, I mean, that's that's brilliant. And it, it seems to me that sport is such a, a high priority in South Africa. It's such an important part of life. Um, it, and it's an important part of, of your history as a nation as well and your identity as a nation. Yeah, definitely. I think so. I mean, we have, there's a lot in our country that, you know, doesn't always go uh, the way it's supposed to. And, you know, there's a lot of things that... Um, us as South Africans have to deal with um, on the daily, like life in South Africa is very really expensive and it just keeps getting more and more expensive, but the salaries don't increase. I mean, it's gotten an increasingly difficult time. I mean, sport is an escape. I mean, we had a massive rugby final uh, yesterday in Cape Town and it just was uh, insane. So the other atmosphere was insane. I saw a lot of like posts and stuff online. Um, I was gutted to miss it, but um, I know that we also are here for, for good cause and to make our country proud. And um, what was your pathway like into South Africa team? So how did you go from, you know, being that young girl who loved cricket to then playing for your country? It actually started, I started as a, with uh, my provincial side, Western Province back home. I started in the 19 side when I was about 13. Um, then I, when I was about 15, I made it to to the, the woman senior side and actually started as an opening bowler, uh, as a seam bowler, and then eventually transitioned into a model order player and now a top order batter. So it's been quite a journey. It's been quite a learning curve of being about, in and about um, all over the teams. And then, you know, I just started going to uh, National Academies, which, which is a program that Cricket South Africa runs back home. Um, then from there, it was just also ISA under 19 uh, schools teams did uh, basically went through all the teams uh, and, and eventually became a pro tier. And, and that's how I got here. So I played a lot of uh, emerging women's cricket, played against the England Academy quite a few times. And I remember playing against uh, Sophia Dunkley, um, Georgia Wareham, and people like that in a track series um, a few years ago when we were all, when we were all young chickens and we were a bit older now. So, um, yeah, so that's, I literally just went through the entire uh, Cricket South Africa pathway and, and I'm a fully fledged professional for this team. Yeah, so uh, tell me a little bit about the domestic setup in South Africa because you, you're professionals uh, if you're contracted to the national team. Is there a level below that? Fairly recently in England, there have been regional professional contracts. Has that happened in South Africa at all? Uh, I know there's been um, semi-professional contracts. I mean, we, we're on the right pathway. So you get your 15 momentum pro tier contracted players and we have 10 high-performance uh, contracted players as well, uh, which is a step down from the, the Proteus contract. And then uh, in each of the, we have uh, two leagues actually back on our provincial side. So in the, in the top league, um, there's six sides and I think five players per province is um, contracted that could be corrected. So it's about, that's about, that's simply professional contracts, but I mean, it's, it's going in the right direction with, with girls who are just finishing school and still playing provincial cricket, whether it be for Northern, Scouting, uh, Western Province, wherever. Um, they already get some sort of income uh, for playing cricket. And I think that's a step in the right direction. And, you know, that's the reason that our team is where it is today. And um, it's been a really big year for South African cricket because you've had the World Cup um, in New Zealand. What was that like? Because I suppose heading into it, we were kind of gutted because of obviously Donovan Nierkirk missing out. And so, like, we had really high hopes South Africa, um, and then obviously <laughs> England <laughs> decided to knock them out. So, uh, what was that whole process like in being part of such a big tournament? It was amazing. It was actually my it was my first time being there, and it's one of you know the goals that I've always had uh, growing up, wanting to to play for the pro tiers. Just the the atmosphere was amazing. Um, it's just there's a different feel around the World Cup. I mean, I've been on quite a few um, international tours already, and. But by the World Cup, it's, it just feels completely different. It's just a buzz. And, you know, you stand in the field, you look around and you just see cricket World Cup boards all over. And like, it's just a, a different experience. Um, it's a lot different to normal tours. Um, and I mean, we, we played well in the World Cup. It's just we had one bad game and unfortunately it was in the semifinals. But I mean, we know what we're capable of. And I mean, that's why we are back in England hoping to get one over on them now. <laughs> The, the game that stays in my mind, actually, from the whole World Cup, you know, ignoring England's games, 
uh, yeah, we lost as many as we won, but uh, was the South Africa against India game, which I just think was one of the greatest games I've seen. Yeah, definitely. It is, it is nice to be a part of. I mean, at the end there, uh, when you're actually, when you're ahead of on our nose, but I mean, she's the ultimate professional and, you know, she found a way to win the game. Our coach always uh, tells us we never, you know, times are tough and, and for the of you, you kind of have to find a way and uh, she did that. So we were a little bit nervous on the side. Luckily, there wasn't much riding on the game, but we know um, it was a spectacle uh, for women's cricket and just the World Cup in general. Um, it was a high scoring game, which is always nice. Um, there was a lot going on. There was never boarding period. So it was probably one of the best ever games we played against them. And we've had quite a few um, nice games against them. So it is nice to actually just get over the line. Um, but yeah, we would have wanted it to be in the semi final. But, but these things happen and it's a part of the game. And uh, we to be always willing to bounce back. And so, so we're ready for the next challenge, which is England in a, in a few weeks, well, a week and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've had an incredible series out in Ireland, uh, extremely successful. And for you personally, you've had some incredible scores, you know, the other day getting 93 not out. Um, what's it like, I suppose, to, to step up and um, I suppose we've got quite a few players missing for, for that tour, um, have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been, we've been without uh, Captain Dane for quite a while. Um, so there's always... That, that spot in the middle that, you know, someone has to take in. So I knew I just had to take a little bit more extra responsibility with Lizal missing out as well. Um, so I kind of, our old top order was was a little bit different to what it normally looks like. So I thought, okay, here's an opportunity for me to just kind of put up my hand and, you know, um, especially put up my hand for this this England series. I think this is a massive and, and a very important one for us. So, you know, we just have to, to so to come into the series with a little bit of runs behind my name is, is always good and, to be able to get used to the conditions that we'll kind of um, face here um, in Ireland last week was was nice. And I mean, the scores, the scores eventually <laughs> came. Um, I felt long and hard for them. They weren't easy runs. They weren't the best runs, but uh, runs is runs. And my coach always says you learn from the ugly runs. <laughs> And I suppose the the really exciting thing that we're really looking forward to is the test match against England. Um, so I think I'm going to head down to day three. Um, but it's, there's going to be so many people getting caps. Um, and what, I suppose what's that going to be like from your perspective of having so many people who have never played this form of the game and kind of are exploring it for the first time? I think it's going to be fun. A lot of the girls are excited. We're, we're excited to get going tomorrow um, to have our first lead position over here. So um we have a three-day game starting on Tuesday as well so I mean by the time that the England game comes we'll be we'll be well prepped and everyone's just excited it's something new it's it's something uh, we, a lot of us in, haven't experienced yet so we just see it as another challenge um I mean we have a lot of players in our team that love batting they just love playing cricket love bowling um I mean Shabnam I'm sure she's ready to go with a, a, a brand new duke in her hand like you know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of positives and, and it's another way to challenge ourselves. Um, we've always said that we wanted to play a lot more test cricket and you know, we want to get into into the the um the mode of playing test cricket because you know I love watching test cricket as well. Um I grew up watching live test cricket in Newlands my entire life. So um I just it's something exciting for us. We we're just looking forward to it. I mean Laura Wolford, the queen of batting, loves batting. She's like, guys, this is this is me. I've I've got this, you know what I mean? So she she's really excited to to get four days to bat in her head. So um I'm the same and, and everyone's just um excited, no matter what happens on the day or how the game goes, it's just something that we want to experience and, and play more of in the future. Other batters a lot more relaxed now that um, Catherine Brunt and Anya Shropsol have retired, so you don't have to face <laughs> bowling. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, they are sorts of, of Indian cricket, uh, some of the best bowlers in the world. And, you know, we've always had our little battles with, with in a battle with, with Anya and, and Kathleen. So, um, luckily, we'll, see, we'll still get to face uh, Catherine in the ODIs in the T20. So, she's a massive, she's a competitor. She's one of the best bowlers in the world for a very long time. And, you know, she's always... She has the respect of our changing room. Um, so it'll be nice not to face them, definitely, especially with, with, with our experiences with the Duke so far. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll take anything at this point. Um, that's not to world class bowlers. And I mean, but we'll obviously still miss the challenge of it because um, even though they're great bowlers, um, we work really hard on, on our skills and, and the way we play our cricket. So we always want to play the best players in the world to measure ourselves against. 
um, you know, the best. So it, it, it is a little bit unfortunate, but we'll take it. Um, yeah, so we're really, really looking forward to that test match, aren't we, Polly? Mm. So as Polly's saying, yeah, we, we live in Birmingham, so yeah. probably about two or three hours from uh, from Taunton, but uh, I think Polly's going to, um, I'm allowed to say, not go to school that day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, and, and uh, uh, yes, just go and mm -hmm. uh, see a day, a test cricket, which we did last year, actually. We went to see England play India. Uh, yep. this time last year yeah, which again was an yeah, amazing yeah. experience and uh, yeah I think to for the batters to have the opportunity to to bat for sessions and the bowlers to yeah. bowl over after over after over it really I think is so important for skill development in, in the women's game isn't it yeah definitely I think it test cricket sport test cricket for the reason it tests your technique it tests your mental strength it tests your fitness it tests um, everything all in one so I mean, we've worked hard as a team um, on our fitness, especially. I think we push a big fitness culture in the side now. And, you know, there's certain standards that every single player who wants to be a protein needs to meet. And as long as you're here, you kind of have to uplift that standard and even push it a little bit. So um, we, we, we're excited to show that, you know, um, all our hard work behind the scenes is, is coming through when it comes to that department. Uh, just being able to concentrate for longer, um, just being on our feet all the time. Um, it, it's something we got a bit of a taste of it back home. We did, we had a camp where we had um, uh, two or three, three, four day games. So um, it was challenging initially because it was the first time we all did it. But I mean, um, we, we're ready for the challenge. And, you know, it's exciting. It's, it's something that the women's game needs, I feel. Um, I think uh, the standard of women's cricket has, has gotten a lot higher. And I remember that India and, West, and that England test match, uh, we were actually on tour at the time. Um, sitting at breakfast and all the girls are, were, were watching it and stuff and you know that's like we sit and we watch women's cricket so I mean if, if England play India or they play Australia like we sit and we watch and you know um, I just love watching cricket and love being being a part of cricket uh, I know all the girls here are just today like this our men's team is playing against India as well and everyone's just getting getting ready to watch that as well so we watch as, as much cricket as as we want to um, as we can actually so it's, it's always nice. Um, like I said, tomorrow we're ready to go. Uh, go get the, the brand new tukes. I don't think it's going to be a delight for seeing Shivnam with a brand new tuke tomorrow, but, you know, we'll take it. <laughs> the really exciting thing for us in Birmingham is the Commonwealth Games um, happening later in the year. And um, so we're really excited for that. I suppose what's kind of the thoughts around the South Africa camp about that? Because, you know, it's the first, like, international sports tournament like multi-sports tournament that the cricket team can take part in um it's actually it actually it's, it's been a part of a few discussions that we've had um over the past few months but but more recently it hasn't been i mean we've, we've taken one tour at the time because at the end of the day it's, it's, a, it's basically three tours in one so it's the island tour which is done now and now the big england tour um and then the commonwealth game so we haven't given a lot of tour to it um at this present time but i think one, as soon as the, the t20 starts against england um, it'll definitely start coming up more in the conversations. But I mean, it's it's definitely something that we're all looking forward to. I know it's a different environment. It's not, you know, the way we used to tours and, and how it works. I know like the villages and you'll basically be with the entire team, South Africa. And um, you'll see a lot of athletes uh, from our country. Um, a lot of people from different parts of South Africa, different cultures, different, um, just different people in general. And, you know, we're excited for that. Um, I mean, we know quite a few of the girls that are actually coming uh, to the to the Commonwealth Games because we we share training center and stuff like that. So um, it's just going to be exciting to to meet up with with some old friends in, in a new environment. And you know, we'll take it in. It's definitely something that uh, not everyone can experience as a sports person, but I mean, everyone would want to experience it. So it's a massive opportunity for us to just to just enjoy the the whole competition and enjoy Birmingham. Um, I've heard it's actually quite a nice city. So we're all excited to get. We're all excited to get uh, to get there and then, you know, just enjoy the cricket. Um, and I mean, the results will take care of itself. You know, we, we've put in the hard work over the past few months and, you know, we just have to enjoy life, especially in these, these tough COVID times, you know, anything can happen. So we just take it day by day and just enjoy it all. You, you said some very nice things about Birmingham there and I hope we don't disappoint <laughs> in any way. Uh, it, it is a, a wonderful uh, city. And uh, I think it's interesting what you say about... Um, being part of a wider South African team. And whenever I think of South African sport, the image that, that comes to my mind, this is that sort of iconic uh, image of Nelson Mandela at the 1995 Rugby World Cup 
final. Mm. Uh, and then, in fact, not forgetting the following year, 1996, the AFCON uh, final uh, as well. Um, and I guess what I want to know is, is what sort of legacy do you still feel from, from Nelson Mandela and the impact he had on South African society, but actually South African sport as well? I think it's massive. I just think um, he, he's done so much for, for South Africa as a country, um, politically and, and in the sporting world. Uh, he kind of united the sporting teams. It, I mean, there's a relationship between um, the sporting team. Like, I mean, Tia Kalisi is probably one of our team's biggest fans. You know, he's always he's always messaging and, you know, congratulating the girls when they do well. And he even has a shirt and he has a lot of off shirt and he just has a, a very close connection to the side. Um, I mean, the men's team, our men's team is also always on our, you know, um, on our side. They always have our backs, so always sending us messages just to say um, they're watching us and they're proud of us. And, and I think that's that's the impact that, that Nelson Mandela did have. Um, I think if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be such a, a good camaraderie between between all the sports teams in South Africa. So, I mean, like I said, we're very different people. We come from different places in South Africa. So um, it's just nice to be able to experience a, a life like this. Um, because I mean, as as a as a young girl, if you get a message from Sia Kulisi, you'll be like, "What?" Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just unreal. And and even in the World Cup, he was probably he was probably our biggest fan. He was always in our ears and, and telling us, "Well done," and keep going. And he's so proud of us. And I think that's massive um, for us as a country. You know, that's that's really good to hear. And um, on the note about value, I mean, Edgebaston is like one of my favourite grounds. It's beautiful. Um, but no, I'll be really interested to think what people from all over the world think of Birmingham because it's just somewhere I've grown up, and to me, it's just like kind of average city. But um, no, it'll be it'll be really exciting. They're going to love it. Yeah, oh, Cadbury Factory, the chocolate factory. The chocolate factory. You, oh, yeah. please don't tell us that. The, the world centre of Cadbury chocolate. <laughs> Uh, please don't say that. Uh, don't put this on, on uh, online because I'll train my seat. But you know, if I must see a, a cat with a factory, I'll definitely um, go in. Look, yeah, actually. <laughs> so that is really naughty. Um, that, that's a snack. That's a snack for an off day. And today's an off day. So I might just um, get in there. But I mean, all the girls, we have, we have very sweet teeth. So I will definitely, hopefully. Get, get to the Cadbury factory at some point. <laughs> that is so good. Just to explain to, to listeners, uh, Laura just held up a big bag of dairy milk that she had right by her. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, Birmingham's very good for chocolate. It's also really good for curry, so make sure you have some curries. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, love it. I love a good curry, yeah. mm. Laura, thank you so much. It's been absolutely brilliant to catch up with you. And uh, just get that little insight into um, the into life of a professional mm. cricketer from South Africa. And uh, <laughs> we want to wish you all the best for the tour of England. We hope you have a, a lovely time. I, th I think you're allowed to win what, one or two games. <laughs> not, as long as it's not the test match. <laughs> Definitely not allowed to win the test match. Uh, but yeah, I hope I hope it's a brilliant tour um, for you and you and you really um, yeah, benefit from it, enjoy it. And yeah, Commonwealth Games, definitely. We're looking mm. forward to seeing how you're doing that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very okay, much. I'll, I'll see you guys hopefully at the test match. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, see cheers. You. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Well, there was Laura. There, there was Laura. <laughs> Do it again. There was Lara talking uh, about how much she loves chocolate and a little bit about cricket as well. <laughs> Just a little bit about cricket as well. Um, so yeah, next week we'll be back with the guest. The test match will have happened. We'll be about to plummet straight into the Rachel Hay Flint, which I can't believe it's that time already. It's come round, round very quickly. Um, you'll be back from Paris. I hope uh, so. Yes. Oh um, gosh, if you got stuck there, that'd be great. Um, and there'll be so much more cricket to talk about, and hopefully, there'll be uh, an England win in the bag. But we'll see. That'll be brilliant. We'll see you next week, Paul. In fact, I'll see you when I get back on Sunday. See you when I get back. In fact, um, oh, there's something I wanted to mention before we go. Um, mm. So, an announcement came out yesterday on Twitter. That I am an ambassador. I've been practicing that word because it's a very difficult word to say. Um, for her game two for Edgebaston. So 
um, her game too is all about um, stopping sexism. And so it's a way of reporting sexism that you experience at ground, but then also just promoting the women's game, you know, reporting people on social media, so all that sort of thing. Um, and so there are quite a few people involved involved and they're just growing it and growing it. So um, if you have ideas or need to report anything, I'm your person. Um, and give them a follow because they're doing some great stuff and um, it just shows progress in the women's game, which is really good. Well, congratulations, Paul. Great appointment. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we haven't had time to uh, talk about you've been uh, going to university open days and that sort of thing. So maybe we can yeah. talk about that. I think week. we can talk do about... that next week when we're back in person. We can have a bit more banter between us, you know, works, but it doesn't work that well over Zoom. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> well, I miss you. I, someone's gone and bought me a drink downstairs, so I need to go oh, and nice. drink it. OK, I'll, uh, I'll see you a bit later.